This is the Begin Within Podcast, where we believe real, lasting health and fitness requires you to start inside before you work out. I'm your host, Nate Slegger, and I'm here to show you behind the scenes of fitness. You already know exercise is good for you, but what about all the other things in life that affect your fitness? If you're looking for extra motivation to get started or to make sure you keep going, this is the place for you. Produced by BeginWithin.fit If you are working on getting healthier, losing weight, improving your fitness, whatever it is, but you have this feeling that you should be getting better results... You're just not sure what you might be doing wrong. Well, I want to tell you, you are not alone. And that is the very reason why I wrote my latest book, Five Ways You're Wrecking Your Weight Loss, so that you can take a look at five of the most common reasons I see that people aren't getting the results that they deserve for all their hard work. Just five really quick fixes that can get you headed toward the results that you want. Check it out. You can download it by going to beginwithin.fit, clicking on the ebook button, or clicking on the link in the show notes. Check out my book. Let me know what you think. My guest today is Dr. Doug Lucas. He's a fellowship-trained precision health specialist who started his career in the medical field as, guess what, an orthopedic surgeon. He was passionate about helping people to feel better, and as a surgeon, he helped them to do that, but he explains that he quickly got frustrated by the failure of traditional medicine to allow the incorporation of nutrition and disease prevention into the process of helping to care for patients. Now, he is the major force behind the company Optimal Human Health, and he is here with us talking a little bit today about what it is that they do at Optimal Human Health to help their clients to optimize their health. (laughs) And that's one of the topics that I want you to really key in on as you listen is the idea of optimizing health. We're going to talk about why that's such an interesting word as we apply it to our health, especially in view of um, kind of the traditional Western uh, medical approach to taking care of patients. So listen for that, that kind of theme there, optimization of health. Super interesting. And then we're going to talk about the answer to this question, or maybe the importance of this question. Are you ready to make a change? Dr. Lucas is going to talk about why that's such an important question for him and for his team to be able to answer as they begin working with someone. So I think it's such an interesting question for all of us. As we are on this journey to become healthier versions of ourselves, are you ready to make a change? Am I ready to make a change? If I am going to move from where I'm at to where I want to be, guess what? Change. Change is involved. So what a great question to focus on. We'll revisit that after the interview. And then number three, we're going to focus on the importance of the lifestyle questions that Dr. Lucas asks of his prospective patients. Why lifestyle is so important. And one particular area of lifestyle that Dr. Lucas recommends above all that we give attention to, it might surprise you. So at the very end of the interview, I'm going to ask him that, and he is going to tell us where we can kind of get the most bang for our buck, so to speak, in terms of focus and attention when it comes to which area of our lifestyle we can make changes in, in order to see some real benefits to our health. We're going to cover a ton. Here's my interview with Dr. Doug Lucas. 
I did all of the traditional, you know, four years of medical school, five years of residency, a fellowship. And when I finished my fellowship at Stanford in foot and ankle surgery, um, I went into traditional orthopedic practice with a foot and ankle subspecialty. I think that foot and ankle subspecialty, I don't, I don't know if this was, you know, divinely guided, but it, it sent me down the path of seeing a lot of people with diabetes. Um, mm. People with diabetes have foot problems and ulcers and, yeah. and, and nasty things. And um, so as an orthopedic surgeon, my role then was to manage these wounds and to, you know, potentially, you know, do surgery on feet and then potentially cut off legs. And okay. in training, I had been told, you know, people that were struggling with this problem were just diabetics that didn't follow instructions, you know, and I had this, mm. this really negative perspective on it. Um, my wife started a nutrition business. She has a PhD in nutrition and she's a registered dietitian. And so she was taking care of diabetic patients in the other realm. Um, and she started telling me, Hey, you know, I'm, I'm reversing diabetes in these patients through this, you know, particular process. And I was like, you can't do that. Uh, you know, cause that's, that's how we're taught. We're taught that, that diabetes is something that is, you know, it is a progressive thing. Um, and then all these bad things happen. And so she proved to me that I was wrong, which is common in our marriage. And then, um, I started looking at things a little bit differently and I really started digging into the, the research on, on nutrition, which I was really poorly trained on out of the gate. And so it started with diabetes and then it kind of spread into, you know, hormone replacement. And then it sort of spread into other interesting things like, you know, thyroid optimization. Um, bone health was something that, that worked, worked well with the, the, the orthopedic world. Uh, and these things that are really not well handled by our traditional medical community. You know, the, mm -hmm. there's a lot of dogma. There's you know, good evidence to suggest that what we're doing probably isn't the right thing. Um, and yet there's, it's just extremely slow to change. And so I felt like my interests and desires were better served potentially in a different type of practice. Gotcha. Okay. So that, that was the birth of optimal human health at that point. Yeah. And so it, it was a kind of a slow progression. Um, I was really, <laughs> I was really resistant of just hanging up, you know, the, the scalpel and walking away because yeah. I, I enjoyed it. Um, not necessarily the diabetic side of it, but I enjoyed operating. I enjoy, you know, the, the other side of orthopedics, which is, you know, the, the glorified side, which is fixing bones and, you know, you know, nailing tibias in the middle of the night from car accident. Like all that stuff is really exciting and fun. Um, the, the power tools are cool. Um, so it was tough for me to walk away from that, but ultimately I realized that I, I really couldn't do both. Um, I couldn't find a practice where I could practice the way that I am now, um, it just didn't exist in the way that I wanted to do it. And so I realized I have to kind of do my own thing. Uh, and it took me about a, probably a year and a half or two years to realize that I can't start and run a practice and be an orthopedic surgeon at the same time. It's just not compatible. So it was kind of a three-year transition. So, so yeah, it was the birth of optimal human health, but that birth took a really long time. <laughs> okay. Gotcha. Nice. So, uh, in your, uh, I think it was in your profile, I saw the phrase, health optimizing physician. Mm -hmm. And I loved it, but I, I want to get your, I guess your definition of it. Like, tell me, tell me what, what is a health optimizing? Yeah, I, physician? I struggled and I still struggle with what to call what I do because yes, I did a, a functional medicine fellowship, but I don't just do functional medicine. I did a precision health fellowship, which is genetics, but I don't just do genetics. Gotcha. Uh, it's an integrative practice, but that doesn't really mean anything, you know? So it's, it's a struggle to figure out well, what, what do I call myself? Um, and so health optimization is, is what I came up with. Um, and I've tried to change it because as it turns out from marketing perspective, it's a terrible name because nobody's looking for that. But I think ultimately that's what it is, um, and so I think one of one of my one of my goals is to eventually write a book called Health Optimization, and then I can just create my own term. But yeah, I consider myself a health optimization physician because ultimately that's that's what we're doing, um, and we're taking people from you know wherever they are, whatever that starting point is, whether it be that you know the diabetic who's struggling with with ulcers and you know on the the cusp of having a leg cut off versus somebody who's really dialed in, you know, has the, the right supplements and nutrition, and they just want to perform better. Um, you know, we can take people from anywhere and make them better with what we do. Um, we have some specific people that we work with, uh, some specific populations, but, but really, I mean, everybody should run through a program like this. Yeah. 
Could you tell, could you tell me a little bit about the, the program? I, I, I like, I love the concept of helping people avoid the, the complicated reality of, of, I don't know what to call it. You probably have a better word, but I call it just like being American. <laughs> like, life <laughs> in America. Being, at this point, it's just being human. I mean, yeah. we, we have we have so graciously shared our our terrible habits with the world, um, mm. terrible habits and terrible food. Um, so yeah, now it is a it's a worldwide thing. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah, so you know how how do we take being a, being an American uh, and optimizing that? And and the reality is is that it's actually it can be very, very simple. And I know we'll get to, we'll get to, you know, what is the, like, the easiest thing you can do and we'll get there. Um, but we start with collecting as much information as we can. Um, and ultimately the journey starts with me having a discussion with a, a potential patient or um, somebody on our team having that discussion and saying, you know, are you ready to make a change? Because we don't just throw hormones at people. We don't just throw, you know, peptides or medications, you know, that's really, just uh, an extension of the traditional medical model. What we want to do is actually help you to not need us, you know, which again, terrible business model. Um, but that's not why I do it. Yeah. Right. And so basically we want to get your buy-in. We want you to get onboarded and, and know that we are here for you. And then we get as much information as we can. And we do that through blood testing. We do that through genetics and we do it through functional testing. But then we also ask you a lot of questions. And we ask you about your lifestyle. We ask you about your sleep, about how you eat, about what kind of activity you like to do or don't like to do. Um, and then about how you manage stress. And then we come up with a plan that starts with uh, the behavior side as we're getting all of the objective data back. Um, once we have all the objective data back, then we layer on top of the lifestyle stuff. We layer a, a customized supplement program. And then we have a discussion of, okay, what else do we need to do? Do we need to have a conversation about hormone optimization? Are you interested in peptides? Are there medications that can help you in this space? Um, and then we'll kind of create that custom program. And then we just move forward with that program. And then we sort of design, okay, we need to retest you know, this here and this here, we generally do the blood work every six months, just on cadence. And then you continue with us kind of as long as you need to, to reach your goals. Um, for some people, it's as short as that first six months, you know, we're, we're tuned up and ready to go for other people. It's a longer journey. It just depends on where your starting point is. Gotcha. Hmm. So you learn a lot about people going through that process. People. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which is fun. I mean, that's, that's yeah. what I, I really enjoy and what I, I really struggled in the traditional medical model of, you know, you have seven minutes with a patient yeah. um, and I'm spending five of it, you know, trying to find information in a, in a cumbersome EMR um, or electronic medical record. So yeah, th this is great. My meetings, when I meet with patients, it's for 60 minutes, you know? Okay. And so it's, we can, we can sit and talk and you can tell me about every detail of your sleep. And I love it. Gotcha. I, I'm just curious. And along those lines, like I was curious, in the lifestyle questions, I would, I would imagine, and you can tell me if I'm like way off, but I would imagine as you're going through that process or someone on the team is that there's probably like some lifestyle factors that when you hear them, you're like, okay, that's, <laughs> that's a thing that we're going to see yeah. in the blood work. <laughs> Do you, uh, I'm, I, I'm really curious, like what some of those are could do. Would you mind sharing? Like, are those yeah, some of those I mean, things just like red flag? Yeah. Some, some of the things that I love talking to people about is metabolic dysfunction. So that's sort of the, that's the, I guess the medical term, kind of a medical term, but really what that means is people that are on the spectrum of, of being diabetic. And so mm. this is this thing that's really poorly understood. You know, people, a lot of people will come to me and they want to lose a little bit of weight, um, you know, but they're, they're not pre-diabetic or at least they don't know that but they have metabolic dysfunction, which just means that they have the early, early stages, which is what we call insulin resistance. And so you can see it in, you can see it in, you know, you, I can see it even on zoom. I can just see it in them because insulin having insulin resistance sort of has a particular look. It's people mm. gaining weight in a certain way. It's, it's how they act, how they feel. Um, and so it is, it's really, um, it's kind of fun to, to see it and then expect it in the labs and then just be able to say, look, you know, this is why this is happening. And it really makes them, it, it, it is, um, gratifying for the patient because they're like, oh, you know, especially when you see it in the genetics too, like, oh, I have this propensity for this. And 
yes, I'm insulin resistant, which is why my fat cells won't let go of fat because the approach that I've been using is wrong. It just sort of like, it pulls all the dots together. And that's what I love about the, the data approach to doing this because it really appeals to that person who's looking for the why, um, you know, rather than uh, other approaches, which are just driven by this is how it works, um, which can work too. Um, I just, this is how I like it. Gotcha. So you're learning about them, but they're, I mean, probably the bigger victory is that they're, they're learning about themselves in a whole Absolutely. new way. Yeah. You, you come out of this, even if you come in for a couple of months, you know, you come out of that with that initial wave of testing, you come out of that with a, a great understanding of your genetics. We use a, a company that has a great algorithm that sort of tells you just what you have the propensity for, whether it's, you know, you are intolerant to saturated fat. So you need to change the way that you're consuming um, mm -hmm. your dietary fat, uh, whether or not you should likely be sodium sensitive, uh, whether or not you, you need to supplement things that are kind of difficult to test for like zinc and copper and vitamin K, like all these things that, you know, you don't really, nobody tests for, or you can't test for, and you're going to feel terrible if you don't have enough of, but you don't really know what to do otherwise. Uh, so you come out of it on the other side, knowing so much about yourself uh, that, yeah, you can really take that and then run with it. And some of these things too, actually, the, especially the, the genetics, the company that we work with, they update the algorithm over time and you can continue to update your own report, you know, so it kind of mm. continues to grow with you, which I think is awesome. Yeah. Wow. That is cool. Um, you mentioned peptides and I know, I think I saw that in reading through, um, some of your information. Sorry. I read, I was all okay. over the place. <laughs> could you, could you talk on that a little bit? Yeah. Like wh yeah, what, absolutely. what are peptides? Why are they so important for us? Yeah. So peptides are cool. So they are these funky little molecules that live in the space between supplements and, and drugs. Um, so if you consider a drug is made by a drug company, it's FDA regulated, uh, you know, lots of regulation around drugs, sold at pharmacies, et cetera. Supplements are sold, made by anyone, sold by anyone, not FDA regulated. Peptides live in the space in between. So they should be, and I'll explain this in a second, but they should be made at uh, specialty pharmacies, they should be prescription products, uh, but they are not made by drug companies. So therefore they are not FDA regulated. The FDA doesn't particularly like that. Um, and there's a lot of regulation change in the works, but right now these things are available and they're powerful signaling molecules. So I'll give you an example of one that is actually also a drug, but the one that most people know of is insulin, like I mentioned earlier. So insulin is by definition a peptide, which is really just a short protein. Um, and it acts as a signaling molecule. And so insulin runs around the body and tells certain, actually most organs uh, to do something in particular. Um, so peptides that we would prescribe would be more along the lines of things like, um, uh, there's a, a great class called uh, growth hormone secretagogues and a uh, fancy word for saying they manipulate your body's own secretion of growth hormone. So growth hormone is really good for uh, for healing, for body composition, can have changes, uh, beneficial changes in mood, almost like you're on testosterone, um, but without the, the sexual benefit. Um, and so there's a couple of different uh, peptides in that class, but it's a really popular one because uh, it can really make a big difference in you know how, you, how you're working out and how you feel and how you sleep. Um, and so that's, that's a fun class. There's a whole class of, of neuropeptides. Some you do as a spray, some are, some are taken as a pill, some are injection, um, but they can help with neuroinflammation. Um, other peptides that are good for the gut, other peptides good for the skin, other peptides that are good for, you know, sexual function. Um, so it's just kind of a cool space where there's, there's a, a lot, there's not a lot of, there are not a lot of physicians that are in the space. Um, and so a lot of people try to get these things outside of that. And that's why I said it should be <laughs> prescribed mm -hmm. by a physician, uh, because you can get these things, particularly from other countries, from, uh, companies that will call them, you know, for research only quote unquote, and they'll say it on the product, but people will consume them. Don't do that. Mm. So, uh, yeah, so d definitely, you know, consume with caution and make sure that you're working with somebody who knows what they're doing to get the right, the good stuff. Gotcha. Okay. Um, I'm, I want to jump to, to the last question, if that's okay. And that's sure. from your perspective, as much, I, as much as you know about your patients and as many as you've seen go through this process, I'm curious to know what you would recommend if someone's like, I want to, I want to do better. I want to be better. I want to be healthier. What would be the best first step that you would recommend for them? Yeah. I mean, obviously I'd love to work with that person because I love working with people that are motivated to make change, but you know, on your own, 
the the first step is to take a look at all your lifestyle stuff. You know, that's where we start. That is the, if, if you want to draw a pyramid of, you know, the important things, the mm-hmm. foundation is all of the lifestyle stuff. So that's the, how well is, how well are you sleeping? You know, what are you eating? Um, what kind of exercise or movement are you doing and how are you managing your stress? Um, you know, so if you wanted to pick, you know, one of those four things, they're all important. Um, I think the one that most people don't do well is sleep. And it is the, the easiest thing to fix as long as you're willing to give yourself the time to do it. Um, so that the number one thing is give yourself an eight to nine hour window to sleep. Do it consistently. Do it every night. Doesn't matter if it's Friday or Saturday. It should be the same time every night. Um, and if you just do that one thing, then you'll make a big difference in your life. All right. Cool. Thanks for sharing that. Um, what's the best way for people to connect with you, follow your work? Yeah. So just uh, head over to our website at optimalhumanhealth.com. And uh, you can look at our, our programs. Um, we are doing as much as we can to get good information out on our blog because uh, part of our mission is to educate as many people as possible. Uh, but if you're interested in our programs or working with us, uh, just contact us. There's either a form that you can fill out or just email us on that email and that goes directly to my inbox. And then we'll set up an appointment for either me or one of my team members to meet with you and talk about what your needs are and how we can help you. Awesome. We'll make sure that there's a link waiting for the listeners in the show notes. Great. Dr. Doug Lucas, thank you so much. Absolutely. Thanks, Nate. Such a great conversation. And the link to Optimal Human Health is waiting for you in the show notes. Please check it out. I want to go back and talk about something that I believe is really an important piece of our conversation. And I, I loved learning so much about the approach that Dr. Lucas and the team at Optimal Human Health take to really covering all the bases in order to really support their their clients, their patients, in order to optimize their health. But I love that question, and I want to leave it with you. That's where I want to end this conversation today is with the question, are you ready to make a change? There's a reason Dr. Lucas asks that of of potential patients before they get started, right? Because so many people are going to complain. They're going to raise their hands and say, I'm not happy. I don't like where I'm at. But then the question is, are you ready to really make a change? Are you ready to make a change? Because change is not easy. That's why they need to ask that question. That's why we need to ask ourselves that question. If we are going to achieve something different than what we have, if we're going to realize a higher level of of health, feel better permanently, to move toward the optimization of our health, to to live a, a better quality of life, even if it's just a slightly better quality of life right now, by the decisions that we're making, well, then we have to make different decisions, right? We have to make a change, a real change. We have to be willing to do that. And that means that we have to be willing to let go of something that we're doing now that is serving us in some way, right? Uh, That's something that I love talking to my clients about is, um, oh, I have these bad habits, Nate. They'll say, I want to stop doing this. And I'm so disappointed that I, I let it get this far or this is just driving me crazy. I just can't give it up, but I really need to, so please help me. I want to slow down with each of them first and just say, hey, how is this serving you? What is this doing for you? Because it's there for a reason. Whatever it is that that you want to change got into your life for a reason. And instead of kind of pushing against it and always you know, resenting it for being there and feeling like it's just a liability and there's nothing good about it, there is a good reason why it's there. And we have to realize that. We have to embrace what it is that that thing, that activity, that habit, whatever it is, it has been doing for us to help us, to benefit us in order for us to move on from it. Because we have to find other ways at times to meet those needs or we have to adjust the way that we think and feel so that 
our needs adjust along with our thoughts and feelings. We have to make a change, and that means we have to give things up. We have to change things that have, up until now, served some purpose in our lives. And that can be scary. That can be uncomfortable as we kind of plunge into the unknown, right? If we're going to get to a level of health that we've never had, optimizing it from the way it was in the past, that means we're going we're gonna to go somewhere we've never been. We are going to become someone we haven't been before, and that can be really, really scary. And so with those things in mind, I come back to the question, the same question that Dr. Lucas knows he needs to ask people before they really start work is, are you ready? Are you ready to make a change? Now, with how somber and serious that all feels, what I want to leave you with here at the very, very end, as you think about that question, is this. The change only has to be a tiny one. It only has to be a small step in a different direction in order for the entire trajectory of your life and health to change. Just a small, tiny step forward. Perhaps in a direction that you've never gone before. It's okay. You you might be heading into the unknown, but it's just a tiny step first that will end up taking you there. So I want to encourage you, as I've done so many times in this podcast, as you meditate, think about, am I ready to make a change? What change are you going to make? What tiny, tiny little step are you going to take in a healthier direction? I want to know what it is. I would love for you to share it with me in the place where you can review this podcast. Go ahead and share it. Tell me from this episode what that little step is that you're going to take, if you don't mind. If you want to leave another review, that'd be awesome as well. Um, Of course, please rate and review the podcast so other people can find it and benefit from it. But in some way, I want you to commit. You can commit to me there or on Instagram. Send me a direct message or commit to another loved one. Write it down in a journal. Some way, commit to that small little step that you're going to take have somebody follow up with you to see that you took it. This is the process to change. This is the process that I do with clients, one little step at a time, and the momentum builds. The momentum really builds. It snowballs as you take one little step after another, but it just starts with one. I want to know what that one step is for you. I know you're here for a reason. I know that you're ready to make a change. Let's do this. I want to thank you so much for being here with me on the Begin Within podcast. It's been a pleasure spending some time with you today. I'll talk with you next time.